well, looks like we still have some problems. So I'm going to get down here in this panel and dig around and see what I can find. All right, I started having some trouble with losing the spindle control. Couldn't turn it on. And uh, this is the anti-plugging relay. So uh, when the motor coasts down, this pulls in to lock out the motor control uh, contactors. So it sticks. I don't know if that's residual magnetism. So if I lightly press it, I can feel it making contact. And it kind of feels tacky almost. If I give it a firm press, then it stays. So I don't get spindle control back unless this guy pops open. So I'm going to have a closer look at that and see what the actual contact looks like. Alright, I had a look at it and there was right inside here, there's a little piece of crud uh, right where it comes into contact with that. Uh, core and so I just took a little had a little file like this handy went in there and cleaned it up and uh, now it doesn't stick so we'll see if that fixes the problem not getting any breaking What is going on with back gear? <laughs> well, that takes care of the spindle control, so we can turn it on and off now. Um, but I'm not getting consistent dynamic braking. So we're gonna take a look at the quick slowdown relay and uh, check for the contacts down there to make sure they're in good shape. So here's the quick slowdown relay. I'm gonna check the contacts on it. This bar right here, adjust tension. So it operates like that. And inside here is where a contact pulls in. This thing just rides on a pivot point. And pulls out like that. You can just undo that spring, preferably not one handed. This right here, it's a reversible part, uh, it only makes contact on one side uh, when it pulls this way uh, towards the outside. So you can see that's where it makes contact. It's pretty burnt up. So I'm gonna clean that up. There's a brand new side if we need it. Just pull those fasteners out, flip it around, it looks like. So here's the other half of that uh, contact. This right here just threads in from the back side of this bracket held in place with a little nut and lock washer. So you can see it's pretty boogered up too. So give that a cleaning and uh, stick it back together. So I just finished uh, terminating the wiring to the motor in the pecker head here. And um, just put some ring terminals, got some screws and lock washers. That's pretty much it. Just gonna wrap this up like I did in the uh, the power connection box. And um, then I'll be able to put the blower in and hopefully start it with everything intact. All right, well all my connections are done. Just gotta shove them back in that box. Finally got the motor mounted, the blower mounted. I got my conduit replaced back there. Made some little brackets. Uh, put some vacuum tubing in there just for uh, abrasion resistance and routing. And then for luck I got a little Prius hybrid uh, loom protecting it as it goes into the control panel. Through that little path right there. I'm not sure how it was originally routed but that's the way it's routed now. 
you just have to go over that drain right there because that's where the top half of the end cover um, gets positioned in that little hole. Anyway, let's fire it up and see what happens. Started noticing my speed getting slower and slower and slower, and now it won't even go at about 50 RPM. So um, I checked my reference voltage circuit. It's supposed to be putting out 275, I think, and it's putting out about 33. So you can see the spray pattern from the oil that has exploded out of there. Um, so I pulled the cap off one of those. And uh, you can see the, that cap capacitor is bulged out pretty good. So it's giving up the ghost. I'm going to try to fish it out of there somehow. Yeah, there's a few transformers back here. Um, there's the big one uh, way in the back. So that's your primary power for the motor. And then there's transformers that uh, just do various functions on the machine. Uh, this one's the constant voltage for the reference speed circuit. This giant block unbolts. And you can undo everything and slide it out the end of the machine. But I'm going to try to just fish that capacitor out of there. And uh, hopefully I can get some numbers off of it. Just a side note, this thing can hold uh, quite a bit of voltage. So uh, it will it will fry you. Um, of course right now it's exploded so it probably doesn't have the capacitance it used to have. Um, but it's still considered dangerous. Uh, the machine's only been off a few minutes. Um, so I'm going to have to discharge this thing just to make sure it's safe to handle. So I got the transformer fished out of there. Got the capacitor off. It's a, uh, made in the US of a 1 microfarad 660 volts. Made by General Electric. Alright, maybe I got something like this laying around. Um, if not, I don't think I'll get this project finished today. Alright, here's a temporary solution. Uh, just went and grabbed one of these, I just happened to have. And it's a polypropylene or a metallized film. Uh, I, I can't remember the exact spec, I looked it up a long time ago, but it's one microfarad, 600 volt. So it's a little under voltage rated, and uh, I'm not sure what sort of KVA value I might need for this transformer. I don't even know if that applies, um, but this is just something I was trying out. It seems to work fine. Um, I just kind of have it hanging out the machine because I was, you know, just prepared for it to pop. Um, I didn't think it would, but just kind of prepared for the best. So. If it popped, at least it wouldn't be inside the machine. And I have fire extinguishers here, so it um, wouldn't have been a huge deal if it did. We'll take a look at the spindle now that I've got this back going. I still got kind of everything open because I was testing for voltages and stuff. Um, you can probe for that transformer uh, directly on a terminal here and a terminal here, just between those two. Or there's two terminals over here, and as long as you engage the spindle, it completes the circuit over here, and you can probe there. Uh, both of those is getting like 33 to 38 volts. Now I got the speed all the way down. I'm going to engage the spindle. And we're turning pretty slow. It's not really registering. Nice and smooth. And it comes up nicely. Got a little drive train line over there. But some Still haven't replaced the belt, so the belt's making a little noise, and we got um, the, the flat belt's in pretty poor shape. Go ahead and do. Now I haven't recompensated. Let's see, yeah. So it's actually going faster than 4,000 RPM. So I have to readjust.
everything was great. Anti-plugging was working, the brake was working. Here's our temporary solution. So I just soldered a couple of loops on the end, squished those flat, pushed them in the spade terminals, put the covers over it, wrapped a couple of uh, layers of uh, electrical tape around there, and zip tie it to the transformer top. So that way I can enclose it back in here and not worry about chips getting everywhere. I've um, just got to try to finish this project I'm working on. Got a deadline Thursday. So hopefully this will hold up and I can get some parts on order. While I was at it, I went ahead and threw a light bulb in here. So the work lamp works. I haven't cleaned it up yet. Let's give this a shot. It's gonna be about 2,000 RPM with an 8 inch chuck. So that was an open gear. Dynamic brake appears to be working now consistently. I got a little bit of chatter from one of the relays. Uh, it needs a slight adjustment, but um, we're doing pretty good right now. I'm going to put it in back gear and see how it performs in back gear. I'll be settled now. Hopefully we can get to cutting something. I know I kind of cheated and cut something ahead of time, but we'll save the machining for the grand finale. <laughs> 